All right, you guys, so now that I've cut the bangs, I'm going to prep the hair to cut the length. It's coming off. But because I cut the bangs and I've been messing with the hair, you see it's got a little frizz going on. And I want to prep the hair to eliminate that frizz because I want to make sure as I cut, I'm cutting accurately and that I can see accurate results as I go. So the first thing I'm going to do is wash this hair and let it dry completely. And then we're going to come back and start cutting. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. I'll be back after the hair is dried and then we can go ahead and get started with actually cutting off the length. So I have, I wet the hair and I combed it with a wide tooth comb and let it air dry so that I could get the natural pattern of the curl that I'll be working with. And the first thing I want to do is gauge where I want the length to stop. Okay, so put it all behind me just so that I can see what it looks like at any given length. And one thing I want to keep in mind is it's a lot easier to take away length than to add length. So I'm going to make sure that as I cut, I don't cut too short initially. I'm actually going to cut in tiers so that I can see how it looks after I've cut it to a certain length. So the first thing I'm going to do is section a piece of the front. This is going to work much better if you have on a light colored top. So don't be like me right now and wear a dark colored top because it's much more difficult to see where the hair is falling on you. But the first thing I'm going to do is find a length that I like, that I would like to start with. So I think I'm okay with starting here. Okay. And so I'm going to take the hair here, right where I'm okay with cutting it, and pulling it straight. And I'm just going to cut it straight across above my fingers. I'm cutting this way. This is not a professional cutting technique. I'm cutting this way because that's how I want to cut the hair right now um, to see how it's going to look. Okay, so I'm going to take another piece. And I want that piece to fall in the same place. So I put my fingers there. I'm going to pull it straight and cut. Woo! And it's going to look blunt initially, but I am going to go back in and fix that. So I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Make sure I have it even. And I'm just going to do the same thing. Slide my fingers in where I want the hair to fall, pull it straight, and then cut straight across. And I'm going to do this on both sides, in the back as well, just taking hair from each side. And I'm going from side to side this time, instead of working all on one side and then to the other, I'm taking one section from one side, one section from the other. And then the section that I have left in the back, I'm just going to split that in half and still do half of it on one side and half on the other side. So now what I have is an even length all the way around in the front and the back. But as you can see, it's blunt on the ends and it's still lacking body. So at this point, what I'm going to do is cut into my curls. So what I'm going to do is take a section and just snip up into the curls. Not too much. I'm snipping at an angle so I'm not cutting off big chunks, okay? I'm take another little section and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just holding that section of curls and cut in a little bit, not a lot. 
and I don't want to cut too much into the length. See, that was a big chunk. And what's going to happen is once the hair is washed, um, the curls are going to take on a different form anyways. So they're never perfectly the same each time you wash them. So some of these blunt ends are going to disappear with washing. What I'm trying to do is create some of the tapered ends that I removed by doing that blunt cut. Okay, back to this side. And I'm just continuing to do the same thing. I'm cutting into the hair by cutting straight up into the strands at a slight angle. And I'm just snipping little pieces of the hair off to try to recreate those tapered ends. So now I have the bottom cut. This is sufficient. And if you're happy with the shape after doing that, then it's perfectly fine. But me, I see a shelf in the hair here. So what I want to do at this point is layer it out a bit. And I just want to layer a little bit of the hair out. And so what I do is I hold, I'm holding the curls and I, t without pulling them, not pulling them, I'm holding them just up and I take my shears at an angle and I'm going to lightly glide down. I'm not closing them all the way. I'm just lightly gliding them down the hair. And what I'm doing is creating a little more dimension, uh, a light layer. And I'm just grabbing this very top layer of hair that I see sitting below that shelf or that short length. And so I start at the top where the short length is and glide down and try to finish off where the long length is. Okay. And I'm trying to give myself a little shape and knock off some of this weight at the bottom because there is a lot of weight at the bottom. And so I continue doing that. In small, very small increments until I get the shape that I want. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not going to cut too much because I want to remember this hair is going to shrink back up as I wash it. And when you cut length off, length weighs the hair down and elongates the curl. So when you cut that length off, the next time you wet the hair, it's going to shrink up just a little bit more because there's not as much hair weighing it down. So whatever I do on one side, I need to make sure I do on the other and in the back. Because you don't want your hair to be, to have a lot of volume in the front. And then you turn to the side, it's flat, like this. This is very flat, okay? So I'm, I'm still going to do that split down the middle because cutting the back of your hair, especially curly hair, can be difficult. Um, and I'm going to clip these bangs out of the way because they are very much in the way, which please do so if you can't see. So I have these two sections separated and I'm pulling this hair forward so I can see how it falls, okay? I want to see where I need to take off some length. So I see the short layer is here and then the next layer is still long. So I'm going to go from the middle, just right here from the middle, and then I'm coming down to grab this section of hair and I'm going to cut down, slide cut lightly and I'm just getting a little bit of the hair. You see how little I took off. And I'm just continuing to cut down and at an angle in the areas in the back that need to be cut to create layers. So as you can see, we removed some of the bulk off of this side because you can see the difference. How there's more hair on the bottom on this side and less on this side. And that's with all of the hair pulled to the front on each side. And so I'm going to do the same thing here that I did to this side. And I'm just checking the shape. 
And now I'm repeating the same thing on the other side. So I'm cutting down and at an angle, starting from where the shortest length ends and cutting down to where the longest length ends. And I'm going to do that in the back on the other side as well. So with this technique of musing, you really do have to just eyeball everything, okay? I'm checking my shape. I see I want to take a little bit more off of the bottom here. And I'm continuing to check the shape for balance and cut any places that I feel are off balance. I've created my basic shape for both sides. And I have my bangs that I cut earlier in the video. And that's it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wet the hair again to allow these bottom layers to do their thing. And then I'll be back to show you the finished look. All right, you guys, I'm back. I washed her and I always let my curly wigs dry upside down, which means this is the right side up. When I dry them, I hang them drying upside down. So let's try her on and see how she looks. Okay, so I wanna make sure I'm checking her for length, which, look at that, it falls like perfectly where I wanted it to. Uh, which is shorter than where I cut it because I knew it would shrink some more. Let's check the length in the back. Perfect. And I also want to check the shape, okay? So her shape, she looks just about even on both sides. It's curly hair. I don't expect it to be perfect because it's curly. But she falls fairly evenly on both sides. The bangs, you know, they fall where I want them to. And I can still move them around. And the hair is balanced, the layers are balanced, which is really important. Now, whether or not the style looks right on me, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out if this is the right look for me, because I don't normally wear curly hair. Most of my hair is wavy, um, except, unless it's kinky curly. So, but I'll show you the back. So this is the back of her. And you see she still has a lot of movement, even more movement now. Uh, she moves more freely because of the fact that the layers have been cut and added. And it'll be a lot easier for me to fluff it. Now if you wanted to, you could go in and, or I could go in and cut the back shorter. But I don't want to cut this top area in the back shorter simply because I don't want to lose that natural coil on the end of the hair. So, um, let me know what you guys think, and I, I really hope this tutorial was helpful. Like I said, this is just my own personal method that I really just tried out today <laughs> for the first time because it just seemed to me like it would make sense, um, and it seems to have worked. So, let me know what you guys think, or if you have any style suggestions, simply because this is a new look for me, and I don't know if it's working for me. I would appreciate some opinions just so I can kind of gauge whether what I see in the mirror is what everyone else sees. You know, sometimes we need that perception from somebody else to, to know whether something truly looks the way we think it is because a lot of us have hair dysmorphic disorder, not just body dysmorphic disorder, so. But that's, that's it. And as you can see, it's not giving me the look of a blunt cut on the bottom at all even though we did that initial blunt cut, but I did go back in and cut up so that it doesn't look blunt. Because I knew the hair would draw up some more.
Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.